In this video I want to start implementing our drag select mesh. So the first thing I want to do is create another camera and use that camera as a template to where we're going to draw our mesh. So if I hop over to my little diagram, this is going to be the camera we're going to create. So rather than use the main camera, we can use this one instead and we can then edit the file clip plane and stuff and experiment with it a bit easier. And uh, we're going to get our four points, our first four points in our cube of our mesh and stick them on the near clip plane of this camera and get the last four points and put them on the far clip plane. So that's what we're going to do in a couple of videos. But in this one, I want to set up this camera, match it with the main camera's position and rotation so it's identical in those respects, and then um, control the far clip plane as well. So I'm just going to um, create the camera firstly. So game object, create camera. I'm going to call this one drag mesh camera. Okay, and I'm going to put it in our camera controller so it follows our main camera at the correct points in the game. So we don't need any of these things. I'm going to remove these components. Don't need them. And we can't we don't want more than one audio listener in the game either. I'm going to remove that. And another important thing is that our main camera is overlapping this drag mesh camera because we're going to change the far clip plane to a very short distance and we don't want artifacts in our game and unexpected results. So the main camera is always going to overlap the drag select. So I'm going to change the depth to 1 on this one and my drag select camera depth is 0. So that sorts that one out. By the way, in a couple of videos, I don't think we'll need this camera anymore. Once we've coded out all our points, we can remove this. Using this camera is just an easy way to set everything up and I think you guys will find it easier to understand if we're using this drag mesh camera. Okay, so I want to match the position and the rotation of the main camera itself and to do that I'm just going to go into the world camera script. All we need to do is add one more class variable, public game object, drag mesh camera. So before I go any further, I'm going to add this object onto our script. So it's attached to our camera controller script. Just going to get the camera and drag it on when it loads up. Okay, that's cool. So when we first start the script, I'm going to change the position firstly. So drag mesh camera transform position equals camera main transform position. So if you guys have been following along, the camera doesn't actually move its position inside this object. The actual camera controller moves throughout the scene. So we don't need to change this position anymore. So now we can go ahead and change the rotation of the camera. So we can say drag mesh camera transform Euler angles. So we're working in degrees this time, a lot easier than working in the rotation. The rotation has a value of 0 to 1, but the Euler angles is 0 to 360, makes it easier to use. New vector 3 and then we can go ahead and do this vector 3. So if you guys remember, we rotate the camera in the x-axis using the the main camera itself, so camera main transform Euler angles x, but for the y-axis rotation we use the camera controller so the, the objects this script is attached to, so we can just refer to it as transform Euler angles y. And for the z, well we just use the camera's um, default value for the z, so we can just get its current value drag mesh camera transform Euler angles z so that fixes up the rotation of the camera and we, we need to do this on every frame we need to update this rotation because even though the, it, the camera doesn't move in this object the rotation does manipulate so just at the end of late update I'm just going to paste this, uh, this in again so the rotation updates and I think that's all we need to do with our world camera script let's just double check and test the game so I'm going to select my world camera script and uh, as you can see it's following the camera controller and when I rotate the camera also rotates with it so everything's working there that's good okay so moving on to our mouse script now I'm going to also attach the uh, drag mesh cameras to this as well so public game object drag mesh camera okay I'm going to make another one as well a public float I'm going to call this one distance to ground okay guys and also we want to make a couple of stuff I'm going to make public layer mask I'm going to call this terrain only so I'll explain this in a sec I'm just going to attach the um, the camera firstly so again you don't have to use this to attach the camera we can we can find the game object in the start method if we wanted to but I'm just using this way easier for me to um, to use one method rather than two methods so go into our world object this is where our mouse script is. 
just going to drag the drag mesh camera to it so it's there so why do we need this distance to ground in the terrain only layer mask well we're going to work out the distance from this camera's position to the to the terrain and to do that we need to create another ray cast and that ray cast is going to be assigned this layer mask to ignore everything but the terrain and that's what, how we're going to work out the distance then we can manipulate the far clip plane to rest on the, the, the terrain itself rather than go right out into the distance but I'll do that in a sec we're going to do this in a new method in this video so I'm going to expand my mouse control I've, um, I've just organized the mouse script into a couple of regions it's exactly the same as what I've been posting online so after we've declared our current mouse point all we need to do is, is uh, update the camera's far clip plane so we're going to make another method here I'm going to call it update drag mesh camera far clip plane quite a long one there so I'm going to copy this and we're going to actually code this at the bottom after the helper functions maybe or before them actually because they're more important than the helper functions so it's just going to be a private void not going to return anything not going to take in anything either so so just to recap this this method is going to manipulate the drag mesh cameras far clip plane so I'm just going to add another variable I'm going to make a float here and call it extend I'm going to extend it 50 units because even though the far clip plane rests on the terrain we need to push it forward so the whole thing is intersecting the terrain just to make sure our mesh will cover the whole of the uh, terrain basically so we're going to move it forward by this value so all we need to do here is make another raycast hit make raycast hit distance I'm going to call it distance this time or dist so if physics raycast so we're going to emit a raycast from the main camera so the raycast is going to point out directly forward from the camera so we can say camera main transform uh, forward so it's going to point forward so we're going to out the dist object it's, it's going to carry on forever so math f infinity and we're also going to apply the um, terrain only layer mask terrain only and then we can go ahead and define what happens when our raycast hits so before I continue I'm just going to go back here and get rid of those errors I don't think there's any more uh, if we go back to the world script and go to terrain only I'm going to change the layer mask so this is going to ignore everything apart from the ground and the terrain is assigned to the ground layer so when this hits the ground we can then work out the distance from the camera to the ground so distance to ground equals we're going to use a function here vet to free distance unity built-in function that works out the distance between two vector threes so we can say camera main transform position and we want to work it out to the distance object dot point so this is the point at which the raycast hit the terrain and then we've got the distance so it's as simple as that for the distance we're going to debug and draw array just so we know what's going on draw array so I'm just going to copy and paste some stuff here um, so we're going to emit it from the main camera go forward times to say a thousand units and let's give it a color color green maybe I don't think we used that before <laughs> okay so that's our color green and then we can work out the new clip plane value so to do that we can say float new far clip plane value equals distance to the ground we just figured that out minus the near clip plane because the distance was from the camera itself to the terrain and the, the near clip plane is actually if we click our camera here the near clip plane is actually 0 0.3 units from the camera itself so if we minus that from the near clip plane we can find out the uh, the new far clip plane so you can go ahead and say drag mesh camera camera component near clip plane sorry minus in the near clip plane value that's good and then we're going to plus that extend value as well extend just to make sure the entire clip plane surpasses the terrain and I think we're almost done here we just need to apply this value to the far clip plane of the camera so drag mesh camera camera far clip plane equals new far clip plane value okay that's cool so let's just double check things and let's see if everything works I've still got my terrain tool kit um, warnings and my sprites which isn't important 
So here we go, the far clip plane of the camera, I'm going to turn off the light so it's easier to see. So if we play the game now, I've, I've selected my drag mesh camera, we can see that the raycast is pointing directly forward from the camera, directly to the to the terrain and as you can see here we can look at the file clip plane value here in the inspector it's 161 and as I move through the terrain it's automatically updated so as you can see the file clip plane is now not a thousand which goes right back in right into the distance it's now a manageable value where we can rest our mesh points on so that's all good and that's all I wanted to do in this video so now we've got our template for our mesh we can now use this far clip plane and the near clip plane to rest our cube points on it and uh, in the next video we'll look at a way we can work out where these points actually are um, so that's it for this video thanks for watching the video guys hope you see you in the next